a very good evening class mass communication basic tutorial class and i am anshu sena and in today's uh, lecture we will talk about indian press and its contribution in freedom struggle so this is a very important part uh, when it comes uh, in the syllabus of uh, bachelors and in masters both and lot of many questions also comes in uh, the ugc exams and um, uh, you know major dates when which was the first newspaper and how it all started so major dates and landmarks basically uh, they are covered in most of the uh, examinations as well and it's also very important for the competitive exams like you for upsc and for any other competitive exams so this important part is not just for uh, the ba or ma students but also for competitive exams so uh, i will cover a lot of uh, important and interesting topics though it is history but still i'll try to manage to make it little interesting so let's start with the slide Uh, the slide is says that the indian language press has played a historic and memorable role in the struggle for the independent movement so uh, if i say about the indian press and its contribution so i think that we all are very aware about how uh, the you know uh, the indian press has actually struggled a lot it has a, it, it the indian press has a checkered history there is lot of ups and downs lot of struggles lot of painstaking uh, uh, things have been done uh, there are lot of freedom fighters like uh, you know who have actually done lot in terms of uh, awaring the people awakening the people and empowering them so that they could know about their rights and they can fight against the east india company and uh, uh, to make it a more uh, you know big revolution so this is what it says this press when it comes to the press word i guess you all must be aware of this press since i have already uh, uh talked lot or lot more about this press thing so i already have talked to you about uh, give you detailed description about uh, press uh, what are the uh, the newspapers organization structure and everything i have discussed but in this topic i will only talk about the history so uh, when it comes to press press means not only just the newspaper but it also uh, says about the books it also says about the uh, you know the pamphlets the journals and a uh, lot of many other things it 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 could be anything it could be uh, uh, a gazette yeah we generally say that you know when i say that the um, uh, James Augustus Hickey has the Bengal Gazette. So this Gazette word is an official term of newspaper that they used in that time. So uh, this press has lot many meanings. So lot many tools actually. So this is all about press. Now uh, let's begin with this first thing that is Acta Diurna in Rome. Very important point to uh, discuss Acta Diurna in Rome. uh we all aware about the first newspaper of india that is uh, james augustus hickey's uh, newspaper bengal gazette but nobody talks about the acta acta diurna in rome basically this acta diurna in rome is uh, much 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 you know uh, there were like lot of many times back yeah many 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 times back i would say this acta diurna is a kind of uh, as you can see in this picture also i just have uh, uh, showcase a picture also uh, there is a uh, this picture shows a stone and in that stone you can see some letters are uh, engraved and though we can't read it we can't actually figure it out what it is written but what it means is that something is written over here some meaning must be there you know those the, the people at that very time if they can read it they can easily um, uh, come up with a solution or come up with a summary or come up with a meaning of it so um, acta diurna is what i say is that acta means activity and diurna means daily so the whole word says that daily activities so daily activities are uh, the people of rome basically they have to uh, they, you know the the people out there those who are official uh, people and uh, the official employees so what they do is that um, whatever the important informations they get it from the official uh, team or i would say the emperor obviously at that time in rome many many times back that means that um, there were an emperor and obviously an emperor also have an entire ministry so those ministry those people uh they 
do what they have they get the information from the official team their emperor team and uh, those information are for the uh, knowledge for the people you know the people have to know about certain information the information could they, they carry information such as the birth the anniversary the death of the emperor's son daughter and any any other important information that are somehow related to uh, the common people and they, they the common people can be affected uh, with this kind of uh, messages or information so those information are to be communicated to them i will tell you what were the those information just in example i'll tell you what are those uh, those information that comes up uh, you know with with those um, uh, information so this this is what i can say that this is a, a pillar or a stone and some messages are engraved so this daily information were engraved in 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 stone or in any other format so uh, and they are placed in a very prominent places of room or on that area wherein uh, the uh, people have maximum gathering and uh, they can sit there they can um, you know if, 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 if for example in delhi i would say that important place it would be the india gate place that people you know generally go there they sit there so th they they have they actually they um, shortlisted some of those important and prominent places where people sit people talk people discuss you know chai pe charcha kind of so those places uh, uh they they select those places they identify those places and uh, with the help of something maybe um, with what tool they engraved i have no idea but they engraved the important informations so this is acta durena that means daily activities in rome so all those information that daily activities important information important uh, decisions important um, appointments everything has been Uh, had been um, uh, engraved in stones and they were placed in prominent places so this is acta durena now i'll tell you in details so uh, acta durena in india uh, the art of conveying news can be dated back to the ancient age when news was given through inscriptions on the wall of temples on copper plates and writing on rocks there were government officials who by beat announced policies and decisions of the king so uh, as i said that uh, all the impo important informations any any other knowledge like the court news the decree of the roman emperor the roman magistrates the notices of birth marriages deaths the important notices obviously birth marriages that not everybody's birth marriage and deaths but uh, prominent people's important such uh, notices they were all uh, engraved in stones and they were placed in important places So Acta Durena is a Roman official notice a short of daily gazette and they were engraved on stones or metal and presented in a message boards in public places so i just have highlighted this word gazette i guess uh, you all must be aware of this word so gazette basically means if i say gazette that means it is all about it is related to official terms newspaper at that time that time was a kind of uh authorized by the uh, people who are uh, you know who are in a supreme power or who are holding some kind of office so that gazette is they got, they get it printed from the official team so uh, now next is that it was a short of daily government gazette officially authorized and narrative of noteworthy events of rome now acta durena is not a kind of newspaper it was just a way of information but still people considered the acta durena originated in terms of as a newspaper because uh, if you say that you know i just have started with the newspaper acta durena because this is the first kind of one of its kind uh, way of uh, informing people awakening people not awakening actually just just the information part was there it was not about entertaining the people not about uh, awakening or encouraging or whatever the you know uh, other media uh, other uh, functions that uh, newspaper has uh, acta durena only and only consisted the one function that is to inform the people and nothing else next is i have highlighted this uh, structures as you can see so uh, this structure was uh, i would say uh, 
as you can see first you just see the pictures these two pictures are there and this picture is from i just have mentioned it in the uh, in in, uh, in the bottom bheem betika rock shelters feature pre prehistoric cave paintings these cave painting shows themes such as animals early evidence of dance and hunting and the bheem betika site has the oldest known rock art in india so as you can see uh these were the pictures and the picture the one side of the picture uh, which is in my left hand side picture it shows some kind of attack like a uh, lot of people are in some animals and they have some uh you can say uh, some kind of weapon they have and they are on a way to attack uh, other group and on the other hand side in the right hand side you can see uh i can find it some animals are over there and the animals and uh, i can see a handprint also so these pictures were uh, actually the way to communicate because that time there were no language uh, script uh, you know if i'm talk if i'm talking about that period so there were no uh, language script there so bheem betika so these drawings reveal that during this period uh, they cave the cave dwellers of uh, this area had come in contact with the agricultural communities i'm talking about the right hand side pictures and started an ex you know they started an exchange of their requirements with each other so uh, this is this is uh, what what they have saw in those uh, time they actually depicted in in terms of drawing in terms of um, you know symbols in terms of colors so these all actually depicts a lot more messages and most of the researchers and many researchers actually uh, when you visit this bheem petika i actually tell you that it is a unesco site and uh, uh, it is in madhya pradesh bhopal and uh, uh, this is um, uh, one of the um, uh, i think uh, uh, the one site which actually i visited because i was there in bhopal since in in the year 2010 to 12 so i visited i got the chance to visit this places and uh, the symbols this is just the two pictures i have uh, uh, mentioned here but there are so the whole entire cave has a lot many pictures and lot many pictures have so many things you know you can easily some of these pictures you can uh, decode easily you know it, it was not difficult to decode those pictures but some of those pictures were really difficult because they had a different narratives they have different stories that you can't judge it by just seeing it so let's come to the next now what is press press means what so press i already have mentioned that press means the printing press but in journalism and mass communication terminology press means newspaper journals magazines periodicals pamphlets leaflets books so these all comes under the umbrella term press and uh, the newspaper um, mean any printed periodical so containing public news it gives not only facts but also interpretation of facts and statements of opinion through editorial news analysis and in a number of other ways and it is also a vehicle of information on the other hand it serves as a means of reflecting public opinion thus in newspaper we find information opinion publicity and propaganda i think these all words are quite familiar with you and i don't think so that i have to uh, again summarize this entire thing now let's come to the very important part which is william bowles william bowles uh, uh, when it comes uh, to uh, you know what would i say like william bowles i would say that he is a dutch born british uh, merchant and he is best known for his book consideration in indian affairs why this book is so important consideration in indian affairs is because uh, this book highlighted the atrocities this book highlighted uh, the you know all those traumas that um, uh, east india company actually um, atrocities on um, uh, people indian people how they have attacked them how they have tortured them how they have suppressed them so basically after the battle of palasi um, uh, the william bowles uh, he wrote this book because he want to highlight and describe each and every uh, tortures uh, that was done by the british government on the indian people so um, what again i'll i'll tell you later on so these are the other slides 
so william wolds began his career as an employee of the east india company so uh, he is best known for his book considerations on indian affairs and the book actually detailed the administration of the east india company in bengal which began shortly after the victory of battle of palasi in the year 1757 now i have highlighted the two words that is was one is in uh, considerations on indian affairs and another one is battle of palasi now if i talk about the battle of palasi i will talk about uh, mirza muhammad sirajuddullah i will also talk about uh, mir zaf uh, uh, yeah mir zafar and i will also talk about robert clive because these three people were very important part in this battle of palasi so anybody i guess you might know about those who are preparing for the government examination so you might be aware of about this battle of palasi so this battle of palasi was fought between uh, east india company and uh, the uh, i would say that um, the last independent nawabs of bengal and um, uh, under the leadership of robert clive so uh, these two people were very important and prominent people so the battle took uh, place at palashi on the river of uh, on the river banks of the hugli and uh, so what happened was that um, uh, you know uh, the it was it was won by the fought was won by uh, uh, east india company but they have uh, they actually they had uh, bribed uh, the commander in chief of uh, um sirajuddullah and the commander in chief was mir zafar so they bribed mir zafar and mir zafar uh, just you know uh, mir zafar just <coughs> i would say that he revealed all the secrets and all the routes and everything whatever is required in any uh, you know fight so he revealed each and every details of their uh, uh, you know that their uh, team and uh, he took the advantage the robert clive took the advantage and uh, yeah with all that sham dam dandabhed i would say that uh, uh, robert clive under the leadership of robert clive east india company won the battle so uh, william bolts uh, he uh, you know when they uh, the east india company when they uh, won the battle uh battle of palasi in the year 1757 after that there uh, you know they have started torturing the indian people and a um, lot of many things was there i would tell you in, a, in any other class because uh, this will if i start uh, speaking about those uh, battle and things then um, the video uh, the timing would be you know stretched which i don't want so battle of palasi in the year 1757 they won the battle and um, william bolts actually he wrote every whatever he he saw in that you know through his naked eyes he started writing each and every details about it and somehow um, that book considerations on indian affair it got published so william bolts he attempted to start the first newspaper in the year 1776 he wrote the newspaper and asked the people to come to his residence to read it and the aim of the paper was to inform british company in india to the news from uh, home and also to bring broad the grievances against the colonial administration his effort to publish newspaper were not approved by the company and was like to go back to europe so he attempted i would say he william bolts attempted to start a newspaper and he also invited uh, uh, the people uh, to come to his residence to read it and to discuss about the atrocities to discuss about the uh, uh, colonial uh, you know the, the everything every details about it so he was inviting people to come and to meet him and so that you know both can talk about it and both can uh, whatever the details he get whatever the source through various sources whatever the knowledge he gets about the east india company he wants to just highlight their uh, uh, misbehavior their ill treatment against uh, the indian people and everything but when since uh, the british people they get to know about uh, the intention of uh, william bolts that he wants to start a newspaper and that too against 
um, uh, the their company, the East India Company, then he immediately, without any fail, took the initiative and his efforts to publish the newspaper were not approved by the company and he was asked to just go back to Europe. So this was the complete uh, biography of William Bowles, which is very important. And what is important in this uh, uh, William Bowles book is that whenever you you can, uh, he, he, questions can be asked from uh, what was the one book which William Bowles wrote, then you can write it down that considerations on Indian affair in the year 1772. Now here it comes the Bengal Gazette. But Bengal Gazette session I will take in another class because it's already 20 minutes video I have done. So it will take time to digest the uh, other details. So I am winding up here till the William Bowles and in the next session I will start with Hickey Gazette or Bengal Gazette newspaper and it is again a very interesting facts. So till then, bye bye.